will uh, talk you about uh, monitoring uh, the occurrence of invasive plants in, in Belgium. So we're not going into the irrigation so far, but as a first step, um, uh, the assessment of the occurrence is uh, needed. And I will, um, I mean, I will present the synthesis of different studies <coughs> made by uh, different colleagues in our, uh, in our team. Uh, and with a focus on Natra 2000, so as most of you probably know, Natra 2000 is a, is a big network across Europe uh, with a rather low protection level, but a high, uh, a high scale. Uh, and it has been set, set up differently uh, in the different states, because it's based on, on, a, on a European uh, directive. And uh, in Belgium, it's the, it's the authority of the region. So uh, it was designed by the, uh, at the regional scale. Uh, uh, so, so this region is called Wallonia, it's the southern part of Belgium. And uh, it is quite contrasted in terms of topography. Uh, and it's also contrasted in terms of land use with the northern part re really uh, high in uh, human population. So we have a really high human population uh, density and, um, and a lot of urbanization. And in the southern part, more forests and more uh, natural areas. So the, the design of the Natura 2000 network was, uh, was made mainly uh, based on this uh, topography uh, and the the major part of Natura 2000 is along the rivers and includes uh, the, the, the forests. Uh, as a result, a lot of forests, uh, a lot of uh, forests, yes, but also uh, rivers are included in Natura 2000 network, uh, which makes sense because these type of habitats are uh, generally of high conservation value, especially in a country with a high pressure of uh, human populations, so they are where the, the nature remains. And uh, they also act as uh, corridors, so uh, they, are, uh, they make sense in a, in a network. However, because of this high uh, pressure of humans in the, on, the, on, on, on the rivers, uh, we might expect these habitats to be sensitive to uh, plant invasion notably because we have a lot of disturbances because of work, because of construction, and so on. Uh, because of that downstream dispersal, so when a species is established along a bank, it has a, like a preferential way of uh, dispersal along the river, and because also a lot of rivers uh, are um, close to gardens uh, where uh, a lot of species can escape, and we have more generally high pressure on this type of habitats. Also, so rivers are uh, really the core of the network, but the stagnant wa water bodies are also important, and uh, another study was made on these um, habitats, uh, which are uh, relatively uh, of high conservation value too, uh, which have been shown to be uh, sensitive to invasion and to be uh, especially uh, prone to be highly invaded by some uh, aquatic species with, uh, with huge impacts. And finally, uh, another type of habitat at the other side of the moisture gradient are dry habitats. They are pretty rare in our uh, region, so they were all, almost all of them were included in Natura 2000 uh, network as, as the, the remaining of a certain type of habitats. Uh, they are calcareous grasslands, rocky habitats, and so on. And they have a very high conservation value and also patrimonial value, so uh, they, they are really uh, a focus for the for the Natura 2000 network, and these uh, these habitats, as it was said in the previous uh, talk, are supposed to be a little less invaded than others. Uh, but we have records of uh, of species, uh, notably the black locust, uh, thriving in these uh, habitats. So. Uh, Based on this situation of the Natura 2000 network, the authorities asked us uh, basic questions like, uh, is, it, is it a big problem? And also, what, what is the priority to species in the different habitats? So uh, they, want in us, they, want, they wanted us to make a, a list uh, of occurring species, so assess the occurrence of the different species. That's the, let's say, the first step in all uh, programs about invasive. Uh, identify the most common species, but also identify uh, 
the species that cause the most problems in terms of impact so that they can uh, figure out what's the best thing to do and uh, where to, to put the, the resources to fight this general problem. So uh, I'm going to split the, the presentation in the three uh, type of habitats. I'm going more in detail uh, along the rivers, because it's the, 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 mo the, the most uh, fine stu study. And then I'm just going to present the main results of the t on the two uh, other types of habitats. So uh, we performed uh, a sampling along the, the rivers, so stratified sampling. We visited 187 uh, units within the Natura 2000 network. Uh, and what we call a sampling unit was a, a part of riverbank of uh, 150 uh, meters by 10 meters. So uh, that's a lot of work, but that only represents 0.4% uh, of uh, all the, the rivers in the Natura 2000 network. So uh, it's still a small uh, sample fraction. So uh, in these sample units spread uh, all across the network, we, we made a, a general uh, releve of all the plant species. And when we found uh, an alien plant, we uh, of course recorded the occurrence but also we calculated the proportion of the riverbank invaded because just the occurrence by itself is interesting, but it's also interesting to see uh, if the species is well present as a high population in, uh, in the, along the, the rivers. So it's, a, it's like a projection in one dimension along the, the riverbank. And uh, we also recorded the area that was invaded by the plant. So that's for the, the occurrence, the abundance, but we also wanted information about the impact. So uh, we used uh, a rather sim simple method to assess the competitive impact. It's uh, just based on the pairs of quadrats. The, the quadrats are put uh, within the invaded area by the species and just outside uh, the, the area. And uh, we recorded the invasive plant cover and the number of native species. So just the, the native species richness as a as a, as a proxy of the, of the impact. So what are the, the main re <coughs> results? Uh, globally, we found a lot of exotic species along our rivers. F 51 exotic species were recorded, and uh, three quarter of the sites that we visited contained at least one species. So that shows a, a, a rather high uh, level of invasion of our uh, river banks and even one site with 13 exotic species along the 150 meters, so that, that's quite important. So what is the top, uh, the, the top 15 of the species we found? We found, uh, of course, uh, results that we were expecting, but also some uh, surprising results, like uh, the most common, the, mo the most frequent species was uh, the Norway spruce, which is a, a conifer species used for timber production. Uh, so it's not native to Belgium, even though it's native to some parts of Europe. Uh, it's, it, it is heavily planted, but it's also regenerating uh, naturally. Uh, so this, m this is not considered an invasive plant in Belgium because of the same thing of uh, the, the black locust and so on. It, it, it has interest, but it, it, it can also cause problems. Um, but still, uh, it's, it is the most frequent uh, exotic plant. and. Uh, even if we remove the, the plantations uh, and just keep the, the, the populations that went there naturally, uh, it's still 7% of the, the, the riverbank invaded. So it's really high pressure of the species. And even though it's not an invasive plant, another uh, thing in the Natura 2000 network in Belgium is that it's forbidden to plant coniferous species along rivers. So uh, this result shows a maybe a, a different problem, but still a problem in, in terms of nature conservation. Uh, other coniferous species were also found, but with a much lower uh, occurrence. Without surprise, the giant balsam was found to be one of the most frequent uh, species. It was found in less sites uh, than the Norway spruce, but uh, generally with a high uh, proportion of the linear uh, bank invaded. 
And the third species was also a little bit surprising. It's one, one of the most uh, occurring species is the northern willow herb, Epilobium ciliatum. It's, uh, it's a species that is often overlooked because it looks like other uh, willow herbs, like native willow herbs, which with, uh, with which it hybridizes. So uh, it's, uh, it, it might be a problem in the future. And without surprise, Fallopia was one of the uh, big uh, species. Among these, what are the most problematical species? So we uh, just multiply the area invaded by the cover by the difference of species richness between the two uh, quadrats to have an idea of the impact. And uh, uh, the most impacting species, without surprise, was Fallopia, uh, but followed by the Norway spruce, which has all impact on the flora, but uh, with also known impacts on the soils. Uh, the other are more... Uh, to, to go faster. Uh, just uh, generally, many ornamental uh, plants escape from gardens and many uh, plants from timber production as well for uh, forestry purposes, like the gray alder, red, red oak, and so on. In stagnant waters, uh, we went in 400 water bodies, uh, which were in and out of the Natura 2000 network, and we looked mainly for uh, aquatic plants. The, uh, we found plants in 30 uh, of the 400 uh, ponds, and the most common were uh, Elodea species, and with the same uh, proportion of occurrence in, inside and outside the natural 2000. Uh, this might make think that uh, Elodea species are uh, the most intrinsically invasive, but if we plot the, the time of residence uh, with uh, the occurrence, it shows that uh, Elodea have been present for a much longer time the, uh, than the other plants. So probably uh, we will have the same problems with the other species as well. In uh, dry habitats, uh, we, we visited uh, 86 uh, sites and uh, we, we found uh, 20, 20, 25 uh, alien species in uh, generally 60% of the site, so still a high occurrence uh, in these uh, habitats supposed to be less uh, invaded. And also some surprises in terms of uh, species because the most frequent was the walnut tree. Uh, we were not expecting this result. This is not considered an invasive plant uh, in, in Belgium. It's really appreciated by people. And uh, the second one was uh, the cotton aster which is also really appreciated by gardeners. Uh, same thing with the butterfly bush. Otherwise, we had a lot also of uh, tree species, black cherry, the black locust, and the red oak, uh, which were uh, quite occurrent. But generally, in those habitats, I mean, fortunately, uh, all these species had a relatively low local abundance. So that means that a lot of sites are uh, invaded or the, spe the species occur, but uh, generally with low abundance, we, have, we had few sites with a high invasion problem. So uh, what are the conclusions? Uh, rivers are particularly invaded. They, they seem to be, the in these uh, different studies, the most uh, problematic uh, area, uh, habitat with many species with a high abundance and a high impact for some species. Water bodies are less frequently invaded, only 7%, uh, but when we have an invasion, generally it's a, it's a high problem, a high impact uh, species. In uh, dry habitats, we also have uh, very uh, frequent cases of uh, occurrence, but uh, the invasion dynamic seems to be really slow uh, and uh, if, uh, if present. So, uh, as a take a message, I would just say that these quantitative assessments in the field are uh, necessary somehow and complementary to the databases, the, uh, the literature reviews and so on, uh, especially for, uh, not for well-known invasive plants because finding uh, fallopia or finding giant balsam along rivers is quite obvious. It's uh, mainly interesting for emerging species, that species that are just starting their invasion or esca escaping from gardens. Uh, also overlooked invasions, like the case of uh, Epilobium. Uh, this species was known to be present, but we were not expecting uh, such levels of occurrence. And uh, a, a big results of, of these surveys are that um, 
trees from forestry uh, seem to, to spread gradually in natural habitats and it's true for uh, rivers, it's true for dry habitats. So uh, these type of uh, quantitative assessments is also necessary for, to monitor these uh, trees which are probably slower in uh, invasion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Arnold.